75 venomous snakes. I know you'd have heard poisonous snakes, but that's not the right way. I would say venomous snakes. Out of that, I fell in love with one snake. I will talk about that soon. This is a serious issue. There are about over 5.4 million people getting bitten by snakes. And India alone, there are close to 58,000 people die. I'm sure the more people die on road, snakes, bike rides, cars, name it, more than 130,000 people die on roads. This is a small amount, but still, this is a big number compared to globally, right? So, out of, one, out of those so, so many snakes, King Cobra is my best. I don't know how you guys feel it. This King Cobra can... People ask me, why do I love King Cobras? A King Cobra can kill me in 20 minutes. I love that, right? Just listen to this. Listen to the, what King Cobra is trying to tell you guys. Quiet, quiet, quiet. Can you play this, please? Can you imagine a King Cobra doing that? That's, that's growling, it's not hissing. Cobras hiss, King Cobras growl, just like your tiger or a dog, right? That's King Cobra for me. King Cobras are the smartest snakes among other snakes. I will give you one example. They can build nests. Out of 4,000 species of snakes, King Cobra is the only snake which can build a nest to incubate their eggs and hatch, hatchlings. So that's, I think, it's brilliant, right? They're thinking much more ahead than any other snake. Apart from that, king cobras feed on their own, including their own, but they exclusively feed on other snakes, apt to their name, Ophiophagus hanna, meaning snake eating a snake. Any snake, including your python, cobras, rat snakes, name it, he will eat it. He's a tiger of the reptile world. And also, they perform male combat. This is male combat. Two males fighting for the female. Female is somewhere across in that place, but she did. Yes, I know you guys will definitely connect with that point. <laughs> we all have done that, yes? But this is harmless, huh? No violence involved. A king cobra can bite another male and kill it. But what if both bite each other? Both will die. A third person will get the female, right? They're smart. I know, it's happened with us, right? But they are smart, they're not gonna bite, they just wrestle around, make sure whoever has more stamina, he's gonna stay, he's gonna go back to the female and mate, the loser should leave as a gentleman, okay? But yes, they can grow up to 18 feet. If there is a fully grown king cobra, it can directly look into your eyes. That means you're talking about five feet. Look at that, I'm just bent like this and this snake is almost this height, right? to my stomach almost. So these guys can look straight into your eyes and armed with enough venom to kill an elephant in a single bite. If I can distribute that venom, about six to eight people can be easily killed. That's the kind of venom the king cobra has, but they're very gentle animals, right? Okay, from where did it all start? I, right from childhood, like, Everyone, the speakers, they have their own stories. I have my stories. I always loved snakes. I wanted to live in the forest, stay in the forest, work with them, understand them. Gradually, I graduated. I don't know how many of them know Banagata National Park. I would drop my sister to the college and go straight there, watch the snakes whole day, spend time. Eventually, I befriended the keeper. One day, I asked him, can I get into the enclosure? Can I help you? I did that. To give you an example how king cobras are smarter than other snakes, one of the king cobra lifted its head up and looked straight at me. That means the king cobra knew there is a new person in the enclosure. Can you imagine a python or a Russell viper doing? I can't, right? So that is where the king cobras, I think they are smart, intelligent, right? After that, I started working with Madras Crocodile Bank Trust more snakes, I wanted to work with other reptiles too. That's a saltwater crocodile, one of the largest specimen we had in captivity. He was close to 16 feet and weighed more than 1,000 kilos. I was feeding him, yeah, like you'd feed your dogs. 
right? Wrestling them every day, that was my job. At the same time, I was also working with Urulars. Urulars were one of the uh, tribal community from southern India, Tamil Nadu. They are hunter-gatherers. They are the best snake trackers in the world. I got an opportunity to spend time with them and learn their skills. And also, then I shifted back to Mangalore, right here. I know Suratkal, the entire stretch. I've walked here, and I spent a lot of time with the local communities, trying to understand the king cobra. And I should say this, that was my life. No trouble, no worries, just snakes, me in forest. Of course, food. No girlfriends, too. All I started was, yeah, yeah, I know, the boys can connect, right? It all started in the Agumbe rainforest, right here, catching king cobras. Every day, every, every minute, I was just with the snakes, nothing else, lived alone in the rainforest, no, no, no lights, no electricity, no laptop, no phone, no TV, nothing, actually. Yeah, and adventure, every day. One of the interesting rescues I did, this one, in case if you're still not happy, you can go down and catch a king cobra, the, the king is right there, just five, five feet, difference between the death and me. What happens? This is quite interesting. Look, the king cobra is in the roof, in the attic. You know how people figured it out? Right? That is, he pooped there. They thought, what is this? They looked up and there was a huge king cobra. That means the king cobra had swallowed a rat snake or a cobra, went up the roof, settled there for three, four days while digesting his food and pooping. That means people were comfortably living with King Cobra on top. They didn't know. But for me, a challenge is you can walk on the tiles, catch a King Cobra, but you can't do both together. That was my first. I was young and stupid at that time. I did this. Look at that. Getting a King Cobra and walking on the tiles, at almost three meter King Cobra, it's dangerous. Either you fall and break your bones, or if you fall with the King Cobra, he's going to bite you anyway. Right? That was adventurous. And after that, we wanted to know more about the species. We did a pioneering project. That's a radio transmitter. We fixed to the king cobra and let the king cobra go, and we track it. And it emits signals. So I would follow the snake. Next one. Yes. That's the receiver. That's the receiver and antenna. You collect information and follow and try to understand what these animals are doing in the forest. So this was the first time ever done in the world on king cobras by us. Good, sometimes just sit there and do nothing, watch the male, female, or collect data, scientific stuff, there, are, there is a mating pair right there. Sometimes like this, that's all my job is. You know, somebody was paying for this. Getting a job like that, living in the rainforest, working with snakes, doing whatever you need, but they're paying. Good? And I got to see the hatchling, they're beautiful. That's not easier, they can kill us. The young one, just born hatchling from the egg can kill us. They're venomous. And what do I understand with this? I love King Cobra because look at their, their imposing presence. They can intimidate you, right? They demand respect or they command respect, whatever you want to say. And pose and the vocalization you just heard. It can felt, it can be felt, right? And the posture, look at this. This is like a tiger in the reptile world. The way he will stand, look straight into your eyes, and he's gonna communicate, warn you, right? And cold-bloodedness, they are. They eat anything which they can capture, swallow, right? I mean, snakes particularly. But at the same time, you saw they, they maintain discipline. Two males fighting, they don't bite. If it's a female, they're very gentle with it. So that's, that's what I love in them, right? And solitary nature sometimes. So, Akuna Matara, happy doing everything, but all good things should end someday, right? What happened? Keep an eye on this guy. I will never forget this guy. He was a little bit close to three meters snake. He bit me. The snake, you see there's the head there. This is what I was trying to do. Stupidity again. He tried coming out, I was holding him, I got bitten. And I realized, I know there is no anti-venom for King Cobra bite. You get bitten, you die. So I, ha I have only 30 minutes, right? And my friend, Sandesh Kadur, 
was a filmmaker friend. He was there with me. We were driving all the way. It's 75 kilometers from the bite case, bite site to Manipal. We were driving with no hopes. No hopes, right? There is no anti-venom. You go to the hospital, but what are you going to do? But we start, we still go, we'll do something. And my friend asked, when are you going to die? I said, maybe 30, 40 minutes. After 40 minutes exactly, he's going to ask me, you still alive? What do you mean? When are you going to die? You said you're going to die in 30, 40 minutes and he's driving crazy. I said, I don't know, Some, nothing is happening. Right? After 15 minutes, my confidence starts building. Right? Something is happening. And the, there was a bite. Look at the swelling in my arm. The swelling was going up. Very excruciating pain. And I, at one point, at the hospital, I think I begged to the doctors, look, just let me die. I don't want to survive. I can't deal with this pain. It was really bad. But while trying a lot of things, I also remembered I had Thailand anti-venom. Anti-venom produced for Thailand king cobras. I got that, we used it, it failed. So hopes were getting lesser. But I survived. My mother thought, this guy is done. Maybe he, now he'll come back and do something, good job, you know, get into a good job. But no, I didn't. Immediately after the hospital, I went straight and rescued one more king cobra with a swollen hand. My friend drew it because we didn't have cameras like this at that time. No cameras, no photos, no, no phones like this, you know. So I asked my friend to depict the whole thing. 50 people, me with a swollen hand, one king cobra, I rescued one more. So my mother lost hopes after that. Right. So after the bite, during the bite at the hospital, all I wondered was, if the king cobra is one species, why didn't the antivenom work? King Cobra was described in 1836. A lot of people speculated there will be different species, but nobody established it. So I wanted to do it. So I started, look at this, 1836 first, that's almost 185 years old. Now I traveled across their habitat, interacted with many people, and wanted to understand what they think about King Cobras, unlike our Malnad region. Here, we revere them, we worship them. In other places, they kill on sight, they poached for their skin, meat, petrade, anything. They see a snake, they just want to kill them, king cobra particularly, right? But unlike here. So I started collecting samples, the tissue samples, to, to figure out whether it's one species or different species, right? Finally, after eight years of work, traveling across their distribution, including the museums in London and Paris and other international museums, collected over 200 samples, finally, we understood they are lab work, of course. There are four species. Look at this, Western Ghats, where you guys are sitting, that's a different species. I got bitten by this species, and I was trying to get the antivenom from that species, which is quite a long distance. So that's the second one. Third one is in Indomalaya, and the fourth one is in Philippines. But why are we trying to do this different species? Again, snake bite. They're important for the biological control to treat diseases and snake bites. Because I got bitten by this snake, I didn't even know there are four different species. So that means 58,000 people or more than 100,000 people getting bitten in India are dying because lack of knowledge, lack of scientific data. So we need to figure that out, identify them, and then prepare the antivenom. That's the objective. If you're thinking I'm crazy to go understand why they're so different. So we, though the king cobra's habitat is disappearing every day, development is a favorite word we have now, construction of roads, dams, whatever you name it, we are losing the habitat really fast. So we, at Kalinga Foundation, what we do, again, to make you understand if there is one like one species, one species there in an island, if there is an epidemic disease or tsunami or anything, we lose the entire species without even identifying them. Now, so what my discovery will do is, according to Indian uh, International Union for Conservation of Nature, we are going to give top priority for these snakes. Western Ghats particularly, we want to declare a national park or a, or a uh, reserve for the king cobra, because anywhere in the world, if the king cobras can survive, 
that is here, right here in Malnad, because we are the people who look at them as gods. We revere them, we worship them. Yes, I want every Karnataka pa person to feel proud about that, and we will make, we will make our King Cobra proud. You will not believe it. The King Cobra which I discovered, I get to name them, right? I get to name them. I'm going to name the Western Ghats one as Ophiophagus Kalinga. I don't know how many of them speak Kannada here. Kalinga means King Cobra. Yes, the scientific name will be, or zoological name will be Ophiophagus Kalinga. I'm giving Kannada name because I want the entire world to say Kalinga. Because, yes, that's going to happen very soon. I've submitted my paper. It's going to get published soon. So every Kannada person here, doesn't matter, even a Kerala person can feel proud about it. No, no bias, right? Even Goa person, there are King Cobras in Goa too. Everyone should feel proud about our name, Kalinga. That's the point, right? So we at Kalinga Foundation, what we do, we rescue King Cobras. Whenever there is a King Cobra in somebody's house, if they're not happy, we rescue them and release them back into the wild. So, so far, 400 plus King Cobras, one of the largest number of rescued King Cobras in the world. Right? And we also try to engage the community, children, students, anybody for that matter. I talk to them and we have indirectly saved over 2.88 thousand snakes. I mean 288,000 snakes so far indirectly. Right? And King Cobras again, out of 36 biodiversity hotspots, six or uh, seven hotspots are right here in our uh, king cobra habitat, so, so uh, uh, protecting them is very, very important. Look, and we all should know, rainforests, they contribute like 68% of the global carbon sink. If there are no forests, whatever we are producing, the carbon is going to be there in the air. So rainforest is important, king cobra is important for me.